Hello, welcome to John Demand. Today we're in the kitchen, as you can see, and I'm going to reveal my best kept secret, and that is how to make the sandwich. We're not going to learn how to make a sandwich. It's going to be the sandwich. This is the big one. And one of my life goals is actually to name this sandwich because I don't have a name for it yet. It's that big a deal for me. All right. So here's what you're going to need. First, a Sara Lee bagel, maybe two. A thing of Kroger turkey slices, thin sliced. Some sliced Kroger provolone cheese. Some, a big tub of Philadelphia regular cream cheese. And, interestingly enough, a packet of Arby's horsey sauce and a packet of Arby's Arby sauce. Or at least half a packet. You're actually going to use half of each of these. So if you are really hungry, it's good to have two sandwiches. Or if you have a friend staying over, make them a sandwich. Oh, and also uh, French's yellow mustard. That's optional. All right, so let's get to it. First of all, oh, one more thing. Two more things, two more things. You're also going to need a toaster and, interestingly enough, way over there, a toaster oven. You need a toaster oven for this sandwich and a toaster. You can't have one or the other. Two totally different things. All right? Okay, good. All right, sweet. So, starting off. Take the bagel and put it in the toaster. Start toasting up the bagel to your normal bagel toasting specifications. All right? Hey, hey. All right. Okay. Now that we have our toasted bagels ready to go, now all we got to do is start with some cream cheese on one side. Now I've already kind of stirred up this cream cheese a little bit to make it a little softer for spreading. Sometimes that really helps, especially with a new package. And you pack it on. I'm telling you, you just pack on the cream cheese. Next, we just apply the provolone and the turkey to the other side. All right, provolone. Provolone's nice because it's nice and round for you and uh, goes perfect with a bagel. So there you go. Now as much turkey as you want. I actually don't put too incredible much on. There we go. This is more than I usually put because it's all sticking together anyway. All right, it's far enough after Thanksgiving. What the heck? Okay. Now what we do is we take this and we stroll over to the toaster oven. I usually put it in for uh, 350 for about 7 or 8 minutes. You might have to keep an eye on it. You're going to watch, you're going to notice as the turkey kind of turns a little bit golden brown and the cream cheese might scald a little. You kind of want it in between those two areas. Woohoo! Looking good. Okay, notice what we have here. Now the uh, turkey is nice and golden on the top just a little bit. Notice the provolone is just a little bit scalded on the side. Maybe it's just, just a little bit overcooked this batch, but that's okay. Um, and the cream cheese is kind of it's kind of puffed up a little bit and it kind of burned a little bit. Sometimes if I'm feeling really good about myself, I put a layer of provolone over the cream cheese before we put it in the toaster oven. Kind of seals in some of the puffiness. It's a lot of cheese though. If you're willing to take a lot of cheese, I highly recommend that. I didn't do it this time. This is the mainstream version, you know, whatever. The other one's advanced. It's way more advanced. Okay, so now what we do is we take half thing of 
horsey sauce, Arby's horsey sauce, and a half thing of Arby's sauce. Maybe a little less Arby's sauce, depending on how you're feeling, or a little less horsey sauce. I love horsey sauce. I think it makes the sandwich. I've been refining the sandwich for about five or six years, and I think the horsey sauce is really what does it. All right, so let's do that. Oh, I like to add these on the turkey side because, well, you know, it covers up the hole. So you can just cover the whole thing up and you don't have to worry about avoiding the hole. And I kind of like to keep the cream cheese pretty clean. You know, kind of give it a taste all itself. Don't let it mix too much with everything else. Okay, there's our horsey sauce. Now remember, you're gonna have a half pack of this stuff left. So you can either throw it away or you can make a sandwich for a friend. I recommend the latter. Or even better, you can have two sandwiches. But that's a lot of turkey and you might fall asleep. It's happened to me before, lots of times. And the Arby sauce. Arby sauce comes out a little bit more gushy, so be careful. You might over-saturate the sandwich with Arby sauce. All right, now we just add the Frenches. That's it. And honestly, the Frenches is kind of optional. A lot of people don't like mustard. You know what? Hang on. A lot of people throw ranch on. Pretty good. Who doesn't like ranch, right? If you don't like ranch, then you're a terrorist. But I'm gonna go with the Frenches, the Frenches today, so. I think I added a little too much of the Arby stuff, so I'm not gonna add too much mustard. A lot of girls watching are probably uh, thinking it's pretty ridiculous that we added so much um, condiments to this, but what the heck. We're men. Sometimes we eat whole meals of just condiments. It's the way we are. We've done it many, many times. So, anyway, that's that. Here is the finished sandwich right here. La. Oh, look at the ball damn. Oh, there it is. And uh, now you just take this side and you put it over here, like the old McDLT. There we go. Now, the uh, hardest thing about eating this sandwich is controlling the drip, which maybe we'll see if we can do. <laughs> I'll never get tired of the sandwich. The absolute best sandwich ever created. And I can't believe I gave away all its secrets. Now they're yours. But if you're too lazy to make the sandwich, come over to my house, I'll make it to you, and I'll prove it to you that this is the best sandwich that you'll ever have on Center Street. Alright, till next time, I'm John. Bye. Bye.